It's Clark, Clark and Perry on the case. Ja, na, na, na. Clark and Perry do what it takes. Ja, na, na, na. Clark and Perry investigate. The activities and interests of local artists in the Windy City's finest throughout both Lethbridge and Medicine Hat, Alberta. Available on Telus, Optic TV, On Demand, Bidflex, YouTube, and more for limited time only. Terms and conditions apply. Ja, na, na, na. This is another episode of the Windy City's Finest. Uh, we're going to be doing our sit down interview today with Gary Uchikura and uh, just kind of getting to know you. And just diving into some questions. Does that sound good? Yeah. Awesome. Great. Let me just get situated here. Our first question mm -hmm. is really just, uh, where did your artistic story begin? Um, I think most artists that uh, feel that they're artists uh, started really early, like mm -hmm. before even school, yeah. um, with scribbling on paper. And uh, I, have a, I have an interesting story when I was about two years old, I went to Japan uh, with my, my mother and uh, my dad was there as well that first time and um, my older brother. So it was just two of us at the time and we were drawing on paper, I, this big sheet of paper. And I, I guess uh, apparently I went all over the sheet of paper. I drew things all <laughs> over the place on the paper. And uh, my aunt on my dad's side, uh, who was a school teacher for many years, looked at my work and said, oh, he's an artist. <laughs> and I think she knew before anybody that uh, I had, you know, very strong inclination towards uh, doing, making art, right, mm -hmm. drawing art, and all that. Mm -hmm. And um, so maybe even before I knew, but I think that the journey starts at that, like, very early age. Yeah. You know what you want to do, I guess. There's a glee that you find, like a, a joy that you find mm -hmm. in, in the activity. And uh, yeah, that, that sort of persisted, you know, just um, latently through all my activities at school. I was always drawing in the margins of my books and everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, always doodling in my, in my uh, you know, notepad. And come graduation from, from high school, I, I always thought that I would, you know, I, I would pursue art as an, like an option one of the options, big options, and I thought, you know, I want to go to art university or, or college, and I had no no parental support at the time. Oh, no. You know, zero, like this, oh, that's not practical. It's, right. You know, and, and I mean, that's, I think it's a common theme amongst most parents. I guess they're concerned about the livelihood of their, their children. Um, but I, yeah, I, I was kind of like devastated a little bit inside totally. having zero yeah. support for it. And so I went to the second option. I did reasonably well in school. Um, so I went into agriculture, which is, mm. you know, a science. I like science and I liked uh, biology and, and that sort of thing. And I thought growing up on a farm, well, what's the practical science to get into is uh, agriculture. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, uh, yeah, I went into agricultural studies for, oh, the better part of a decade, I guess. Hmm. Uh, I, after graduating from uh, Olds College, I went to Guelph, University of Guelph in Ontario. And then from there, I went to Japan, where I spent seven years in Japan. Um, primarily, I went to Japan because I wanted to pick up my Japanese. Hmm. And I think uh, most p immigrants can relate to the idea of uh, being unable to completely communicate with your parents in mm. their mother tongue right. and so they like their their english is a bit broken mm -hmm. and i always felt sort of this gap in communications with with my parents so i i always felt that um learning the language is something i i kind of desired mm. uh just to be able to talk to my parents a little mm. bit better yeah and not just like a, a five-year-old talking to a you know a much older parent but mm -hmm. as you know somebody that understood the technical you know technical words vocabulary enough to communicate complex ideas mm -hmm. not just saying yes i will or no i won't or, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know that sort of conversation yeah yeah so um cool. yeah i i felt i achieved that in japan mm -hmm. uh, but I, I was also studying uh, plant genetics and breeding there at Chiba University mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so I yeah um, 
Uh, where, 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 what's the, what was the primary direction of, yeah, oh, where, where question. did my art, art, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 where did my art, mm -hmm. um, career take, well, start to form, I guess, and, mm -hmm. yeah, so, all through university, I was, I continued to draw, uh, you know, um, I, I also did things like write poetry and that sort of thing, but, uh, really cheesy poetry, I think, in hindsight, yeah, yeah. but, I mean, yeah. I, I enjoyed that practice as well. yeah. yeah. And I do that quite frequently today. That's great. As yeah. well, like uh, to my friends, close friends, I'll I'll write haikus every now and again awesome. periodically. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah <laughs> I, I like. I really enjoy that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but after you know several dec, a couple decades of of studying and working in agriculture, uh, I I realized I wasn't really getting much joy out of that career. Right. And you know, I thought. You know, if there's any time to do it, I mean, it's, now is the time. I thought, right? I had yeah. a little money in the bank, and I thought I might as well pursue this art thing that mm -hmm. you know, uh, nobody was supporting me with when I was younger. I guess. Yeah. So yeah. And so, yeah, I I enrolled at the University of Lethbridge in 2016, the fall. I, I was first in new media, but then I I transitioned into immediately into art studio because I did new media. Uh, I, I like dabbling with computers, but I was nowhere near the proficiency right. necessary to, to make that a smooth sure, program yeah. for me. Yeah. Um, so, and, and I knew uh, more than anything, I, I didn't want to play with art on a computer. I want hands-on sort of traditional media, mm -hmm. painting, sculpting, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And in uh, twenty in the summer of twenty eighteen, the summer twenty eighteen, I took a course in um, ceramics uh, taught by Tanya Duty at the university, and um, that that was the breakthrough moment. Yeah, I mean, I, I had played with clay on a wheel once or twice before that at a friend's place, and uh, and. I'd made sort of amateurish cups, very thick. Mm. <laughs> like I didn't get too much instruction from my friend, but she said, "Oh, that's not bad for a first try." But I, I, I remember <laughs> those cups that they were there. Like I feel like they're an inch thick on the yeah, bottom, yeah. <laughs> which is too thick for good pottery. Yeah. But uh, um, yeah, now nowadays I look back and I laugh a little bit. But that's I think most people have a similar experience. Yeah, I mean, it reminds me of like. If you were to see those drawings that you made as a kid on that yeah. big sheet of paper, yeah, right, sure. it would be, probably be like, yeah. ah. But in the moment, right, yeah. and like when you're doing it like that, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, um, I I read a book once uh, called The Demon Haunted World, by Carl Sagan, and he, he talks about a whole pile of different things in that book. But uh, one of them, I think, was if I recall correctly, he talks about the inner demon inside of you. Mm -hmm. and, and not a demon as in a you know an evil spirit or anything it's just the the spirit that sort of uh occupies uh, a place in your in your psyche i guess right for sure um and over time no, no matter what you do uh that demon inside of you is pushing you towards the thing that you most want to do mm -hmm. it's, it's constantly pushing you in that direction mm -hmm. whether you decide like if you're an artist, but you still want to, uh, or if, if you're uh, in agriculture and you still want to be an artist, your your brain constantly finds segues mm -hmm. into doing things that are more art oriented yeah. than, than the thing that you're you're sort of stuck mm -hmm. in doing as a career. Yeah. Uh, did you did you find that at all in in agriculture? Like I don't know what you did. Uh, because agricultural uh, science but like was it hands-on in any way it, it's hard to do that in yeah. agriculture yeah. i think my brain wandered in that direction constantly yeah. and so i i would be thinking about um art at the weirdest times i guess during the, yeah. <laughs> during the day um so yeah i i feel like uh yeah i i put off I put off the art career for so many years, mm -hmm. but when I started school again, I like everything just sort of flooded back, and yeah. I, I had I had the ability to make art. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't something that 
I hadn't been cultivating because I, mm. I was always doodling and drawing and, totally. and that even that doodle practice is sort of like a practice in controlling your hand. Totally. And I think that translated into my ceramic practice as well. Like as soon as I touched the wheel, um, hand control is essential in, in forming, you know, a smooth vessel, for instance. <laughs> and uh, I felt like I, I, I just fell into this practice so effortlessly. Mm -hmm. uh, it was it was the eureka moment, so to speak. And yeah, uh, yeah I I haven't looked back since. Actually, I, I want to get back into painting or yeah, yeah. sculpting in other media as well mm -hmm. at some point. But uh, for five years, all I've done really is is, is make is pottery. pottery. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right on. Mm -hmm. um, Next question for you here. Uh, we'll just kind of go through the list. Um, uh, what would be your top three tips on getting into pottery, do you think? Well, finding a good studio is, is a great thing, a community studio. Uh, Casa in Lethbridge is a godsend because mm -hmm. I think it's around $200 a year for membership. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the $200, you get a gas kiln that you can fire at, uh, electric kilns. I think there's five, five maybe six electric kilns at, wow. at uh, Casa. And uh, yeah, the, the facilities are great, fantastic. Uh, right beside the clay, clay making studio is also a wood, wood shop. And then there's printmaking upstairs, there's textile uh, room upstairs in the studio as well. Um, and there's all sorts of rooms that you could, you know, if you wanted to do a, a practice, I don't know, some kind of, that would involve a space or whatever, then uh, there's all sorts of that around like there's dance studio up, mm -hmm. uh, up there as well um, it kind of has everything you need I think it has yeah. absolutely everything any average uh, you know creative would require for mm -hmm. uh, you know improving their practice mm -hmm. so and I think in Calgary you're, you're looking at 200 plus per month right for a much smaller space of work for yourself I mean, totally. yeah, yeah it's just mm -hmm. yeah it's in, in incomparable i think mm -hmm. yeah. right on yeah so yeah. finding a good studio finding somebody that is willing to teach you mm -hmm. um i think the most important thing is discovering that love on your own as well mm -hmm. like that thing that you love to do that you gravitate towards that mm -hmm. it's, it feels almost essential to your being mm -hmm. i think that's that's the most important thing i think mm -hmm. yeah right on <laughs> awesome uh, is there a kind of technique or style mm -hmm. that you find yourself implementing or drawn towards since we're on this yeah. idea of gravitating to things? Um, I, I have a friend, uh, she's, she's a native, native Canadian, and um, I remember an artwork that she did uh, where she beaded something. And uh, after, uh, I think it was a, a text written underneath it, is, is the work uh, native? Is it native mm -hmm. because I'm part native or how much like, and it asks all sorts of questions. What yeah. does native mean exactly? And, For sure. um, you know, what part of me is native if I grew up in a, in a sort of a white, white school environment. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that, that sort of, you know, line of thought hit me as well, because that's the same thing with me. Totally. Uh, is the stuff that I make Japanese because my parents are Japanese and I mm. have some Japanese culture sort of obviously filter into to my uh, understanding. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like my work reflects Japanese aesthetics in, in lots of ways, but mm. uh, I think everybody ultimately is a very unique human being. Mm -hmm. um, I think most people that look at my work say, oh yeah, it's definitely got Japanese influence of some mm. kind. So I, you know, it's it, it's something I can't escape. It's part of me, right? Totally. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think it's something that gets lost easily, though. Mm. Uh, like some things disappear slow, more slowly over the generations. But I, th I think, oh, sorry, I think one thing that um, changes or is lost the quickest is the capacity for the language. Mm. And for me, language has always been sort of a key, 
a key to discovering a culture or understanding a culture. Mm. Uh, so that the language sort of reflects how people think. Mm -hmm. And if you don't understand the language, there are lots of ideas that don't transmit in exactly the same way. There, oh. there's, there's a, yeah, there's sort of a breakup in the transmission mm -hmm. as you, as you try to communicate in another language. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. and so then do you, so are you speaking about that in terms of, for instance, pottery and it has a language to it and um, kind of the passing down of, of styles or techniques? Is, yeah. Is that kind of what well, well, yeah, culturally, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's okay. similar, right? Culturally, yeah. like if I was to say I, I'm making Japanese pottery, uh, yeah, people would say, okay, maybe if you're a Canadian and haven't seen a lot of Japanese pottery, totally. you'd say, oh, yeah, that looks Japanese to me. But then someone that's from Japan would look at it and say, there's something different. Right, <laughs> it's, right. it's not quite the yeah. Japanese pottery that I'm used to seeing. Totally. Right? There's, right. there's something different in the form. I'm happy with that, though, yeah, right? because that, that makes the work more unique. I guess. And it's more, maybe more true to you yeah. if you are you know, yeah, Canadian sure. and Japanese. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, mm -hmm. What was the original question again? Let's the original question <laughs> uh, was, is there a kind of technique or style you find yourself mm -hmm. implementing or uh, drawn towards? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I tend towards um, forms that are... Uh, they, they implement that, uh, what do you call it, the, the uninterrupted curve. Mm. So I don't like works that go and jut in place. I want it to, to move smoothly mm. in a way that's not, uh, you know, too, too abrupt. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm always looking for this, this thing, this idea of maybe grace, gracefulness. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, do, I do want my works to be aesthetically functional. Mm. Uh, but also have sculptural, you know, influences on it. Um, for me, the the pot as a functional object uh, is something that is brought closer to the user because they're using it on a regular basis. They they have they hold it in their own hands. Um, they drink from it. They eat from it. Uh, and and there's something. I like about this idea of, of personalizing this artwork, mm -hmm. the, the work that they're using. Um, I feel like there's a aspect, a strong aspect of communication between me and the person that's using these things that I've made. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, there's I, that's the thing that brings me joy is when somebody's actually using my my pottery. I, I, I it makes me really happy. I yeah. think. Yeah. Um, hmm. And that, that's part of the reason why, if you see my work, and uh, I'm, I'm sure we're gonna, which we will, we're gonna, yeah. yes. <laughs> but uh, I, I tend to put a lot of finger marks, fingerprints into it. If it's not a direct impression, I oftentimes um, hold the cup in a hand, in my hand, and then dip glaze it, and it leaves leaves my fingerprints on the glaze pattern. Mm. And uh, I, I really like doing that because I want. I want the person to look at it and ponder how the hand was placed there. And mm -hmm. it, it feels like my last communication between me and um, whoever whoever uses the vessel. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I, I feel like that's like a Japanese influence is there. Uh, the idea of, of these uninterrupted curves and grace. Um, mm. For me, aesthetically working on the wheel, uh, it, and I'm sure a lot of people would say this is it feels like a little bit like magic when you form this mm. this vessel that grows taller uh, out of this lump of mud basically yeah, yeah. on the wheel and um, yeah there's that magic is the thing that attracts me to the medium I think mm -hmm. yeah right on. yeah cool um very cool yeah uh, who would you consider your target audience if any. You know, my primary target audience is, has got to be my friends. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, the people I hang up, maybe, maybe they, they uh, pra praise me over much, I think, in, in, in some <laughs> sometimes, because uh, I, I often end up giving, giving pottery away for Christmas presents and Celebrate birthdays them. and that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's, for me, there's, there's nothing that makes me happier than sort of 
have sharing my work with people that really really like it i guess mm -hmm. so um yeah right on yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. if you have anything else to add please do uh, what else is was was the question again uh i know I asked this who would you consider your target audience who That's would totally I okay, okay. Yeah. who would i consider my target audience um I mean, I, I kind of don't have uh, a specific audience in mind. I think I feel like everybody can relate to it. Yeah. I feel like it, it's a conversation I, I wouldn't mind having with just about anyone, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, if if it's an audience that I I'm not interacting with, it's because they they are not interested in pottery, I guess, or they totally, don't, they don't yeah. appreciate uh, that sort of thing, I guess. Mm -hmm. And there are people out there like that, I think. But mm -hmm. Yeah. I think sometimes that's just a matter of conversation, even, too, or exchange of ideas. Um, not that I want to change everybody's thinking, but uh, I think that um, keeping an open mind is really important, mm -hmm. I think, uh, whether it's it's the artist or or the person that's, you know, viewing the work mm -hmm. yeah yeah well, so well. Every, everyone is the target audience Absolutely. i think yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> um uh so on to our next question here mm -hmm. um what are you most proud of about yourself oh making that that jump back into art school after decades literally of studying sciences and agriculture mm -hmm. um, i feel like that uh that's a step that a lot of people are unable to make. I, whether it's a matter of uh, circumstances that they're in, if they've got a family, they're and I'm fortunately not married and I don't have <laughs> children. So mm -hmm. um, at 45, I was 45 when I went back to right. art school, and I know other people have done it too, but I just and uh, I I, I got to give kudos to them too because that mm -hmm. takes a bit of a leap of faith, mm -hmm. you know. I've had friends ask me that are about my age, you know, like, do you think I could go back to school? I said, yes, you can go back to school. Yeah. But as long as you're passionate about what you're doing, right? right. Is it the thing that you've always wanted to do? Then mm -hmm. You'll do good, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's because I think as, if you go back to school as an older student, you've already sort of, you know exactly in a very specific way what you want to pursue. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas with uh, a young kid just fresh out of high school haven't hasn't given up many years of thought or anything they'll go in and say i think i want to do that so they're not <laughs> quite sure of themselves and i think yeah. that that means that a lot of times they they go into something and they're just experimenting which is fine mm -hmm. i think yeah. that you know a lot of people require that formative time where they're just playing and, and seeing if they really like like the thing that they're doing mm -hmm. and uh yeah, as an older older student, if you decide you want to go to school, you you've got a very rock solid reason mm -hmm. behind why you want to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. Mm. Yeah. Um, and what is your greatest accomplishment? It sounds. Would it be the uh, yeah? The, 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 the this sort of mixes with that. Uh, my greatest accomplishment is just being honest with myself about what I wanted to do. I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think most people would probably agree with that sentiment. Um, yeah. You know, find, knowing in your heart of hearts that that's what you want to pursue, yeah, yeah. and actually going out and doing mm -hmm, it. Because mm -hmm. um, there are endless excuses and things yeah, and kind of thing. And yeah. again, and like we said, like there are sometimes very real circumstances, right? Right. That, you have to deal yeah. with uh, rea yeah. financial realities and totally. that sort of things. Yeah. First, first mm -hmm. priority. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, I consider myself very lucky that way that uh, I didn't have uh, these kinds of, um, I don't want to call them disadvantages, but they're, they're uh, if, if you want to do something like pursue art later in life and you've got family, to, that makes it so much harder. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you can do, if you can manage something like that, then you know you are one hundred percent, you know that person, that <laughs> artist that uh, you know is really dying to get mm -hmm. out there, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, what are you still hoping to accomplish? Well, uh, my my dream is to have my own studio somewhere where I have several kilns that I could fire my pots <laughs> and. Uh, um, 
<laughs> maybe a, a group of friends or, or people that are interested in coming and doing seminars or, mm -hmm. or just hanging out while we throw pottery, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that would be, that's a, maybe an odd dream for some people, but that's all I, I really care about. I've sort of fixated on this idea. Yeah. Just having an art studio, maybe a big warehouse to keep all my stuff. <laughs> for sure, for sure. <laughs> so I, I've been accumulating stuff. I, I need to work on a web page, actually. Web page mm. is the thing that I, uh, I don't have set up just yet. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the important key to making myself a little more financially sustainable sure, in, yeah. this, in this adventure, I guess, I've started. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, yeah, once I get that, you know, I think I should be able to bring the inventory up that <laughs> decrease the <laughs> amount of storage space I need. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy where I am right now. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, what do you want people to know about you? Mm -hmm. Let me think. Mm -hmm. And we could come back to it too. Or, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's come back to that one. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, what do you need more of in your life other than kilns, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel like I need to travel more. Mm. That's, um, I think Mark Twain was the one that said uh, traveling is, is the best education you can give yourself. Mm. Where if you travel to see other peoples and other cultures, um, you know, things like racist I ideas and, and uh, you know, uh, small minded, small mindedness, uh, like traveling will open your mind. Mm -hmm. I think it exposes you to different ways of thinking mm -hmm. uh, and it forces you to sort of adapt to, to these things uh, in some way. Mm -hmm. When I spent seven years in Japan, I mean, even though it's my parents' culture, there's so many things missing mm. in, in my upbringing in terms of, uh, I guess, what's, what's thought of as culturally appropriate behavior or language mm. or what have you. There's so many things I, I was constantly learning while I was there, mm. which is, you know, why I think I was able to sustain a seven year stay there as long as I did. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like uh, if you if you stop learning, you you stop you stop living basically mm -hmm. yeah. i think that's the thing um learning is sort of the fuel that gives you the desire to live mm -hmm. so if you stop learning it's yeah life gets boring really quickly i think for sure yeah it yeah. starts to kind of stag stagnate yes is that the word? yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and and uh it, just a, a question you made me think of like um if you were to travel more mm -hmm. uh would it be important to you to learn the we've been talking about languages like mm -hmm. would you need to know the language or would you like to uh, an attempt it? to learn some of the basics of the language yeah. is important like i i had a huge advantage yeah. i had a huge advantage because i grew up speaking basic japanese at home mm -hmm. and so i was like there's there's a exponential curve that you would ride on right Mm -hmm. If you began here, it takes a long time to get to this part where you actually start learning quickly. Totally. And I was already on this part where I was mm -hmm. learning quickly right from the get-go. Because mm -hmm. I, if I didn't understand a word, I very easily asked them to explain it more right. in simpler terms, right? And, mm -hmm. and so I, I picked up vocabulary really quickly. That's so uh, cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice. Mm -hmm. uh, J Japanese is such a diametrically different language though mm -hmm. in terms of how it's written uh you know the the grammar order of grammar and that mm -hmm. sort of thing so if you can wrap your head around two languages as as opposite as english and japanese which <laughs> yeah. i had the good fortune of, of being raised you know in in those two languages yeah. um i think it gives your brain sort of this advantage in terms of uh being able to trans like simultaneously translate Mm -hmm. not even a translation at, at some point i think mm. you just think in that language I, right. I think when i was in japan i started dreaming in japanese mm. fairly, like i'd wake up and i thought well, that was a japanese dream you know? <laughs> yeah. i spoke in japanese and everybody was speaking to me in japanese wow. so yeah it, it happened fairly quickly i think that they say that that's sort of the 
um, litmus test of whether or not you're really learning the language if you start dreaming in that language. I've never yeah. heard that, but yeah. that, that makes that, sense. Like, yeah. That would be really... It's sort of an effortless yeah. process at that point, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. interesting. <laughs> um, uh, kind of juxtaposed to the, the other question there, mm -hmm. uh, what do you need less of in your life? Mm, junk. I feel like I, I need to minimize the amount. I have so much clutter at home and it's a huge issue, I think, for me. Yeah. Uh, I do need to get a place of my own, I think, just mm -hmm. so I can have some place to put some of my stuff. But mm -hmm. I, even more than that, I need to reduce the amount of junk in my life, mm -hmm. like, like mm -hmm. objects and, and belongings. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've heard some interesting things about... Um, the life of a sculptor and I consider consider myself a sculptor as well mm -hmm. uh, as a potter um, but this I can't remember it was like a master class or something there's a sculptor a woman that was talking about as a sculptor she says it was, it's basically a given that she's a hoarder as well yeah. <laughs> and that kind of makes sense I mean I think uh, <laughs> yeah sculptors are kind of kindred spirits in that in that way because they're always fascinated by objects of all kinds yeah. right and so you tend to accumulate all these objects and and these ideas that you know mm. you say oh it might become useful totally. at some point <laughs> and you wish you had a great big warehouse that you could hoard all these yeah. objects that you sort of found interesting at some point mm -hmm. and uh, it's very difficult to unload those things mm -hmm. and uh yeah, while I say it's a priority, I, I feel like I'm going to find that process very difficult <laughs> trying to throw away things that I don't need anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And is that like specifically like pieces of pottery or is it tools? A lot of just... it's pottery right now, but yeah. I've got books and I've got mm -hmm. music like CDs, you know, yeah, my yeah. old school. <laughs> I don't have cassettes anymore, but yeah. uh, like CDs and uh, yeah, what have you. Like I'm, I'm, I feel like I've got a lot of interests as well. Like mm. uh, I'm, I used to be much more physically active, so mm -hmm. I, I did things like badminton and martial arts, and so I, I accumulate all the martial arts and gear. Like kendo, I did. Uh, it's like a sword practice. Mm. Not exactly the same as uh, real sword, but uh, you know, you practice with bamboo sword, mm. and you, so you need armor. So he, I bought a set of armor and oh, all that, cool. and. I've got numerous, you know, numerous bits of um, wef like wooden weaponry from mm -hmm. from karate days and that sort of thing, um, and so yeah, I just my physical activities make me accumulate all sorts mm -hmm. of of these uh, these bits of equipment. I think mm -hmm. again, clutter. <laughs> I, I need to decrease the amount of clutter in my life. For sure. <laughs> I think uh, yeah, that's. Mm. I, I need to start somewhere with that. Right? Mm, interesting. Yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, I, I don't think you're alone. I think there's <laughs> yeah, a lot of I think a lot of people are there, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. For, sure, for sure. There's a, a Japanese woman named uh, uh, Mari, Mari Kondo, mm -hmm. and she wrote a book, The Art of, was it The Art of Cleaning Up or something like that, or Tidying, The Art of Tidying Up. Okay. She calls it the. They call it the Konmari method of cleaning up your life, basically. <laughs> what does it entail? Uh, well, it, it or... means it's basically a treatise to uh, minimalism. Okay. You know, like, and I think she is very good about understanding that everyone has their own level of minimalism that they want to get to. Absolutely. You know, like, yeah. so there are things that you absolutely do not want to part with the yeah. things that spark what what she says in the book is spark joy exactly yeah so if it if you hold it in your hand and it sparks joy you should keep it yeah you should keep it you should yeah. keep it yeah, yeah so yeah. i think i need to do a very careful analysis of <laughs> what objects in my collection spark joy with me I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and i find sometimes that can change depending on the day right? yeah or, or the yeah yeah so absolutely it's process for yes sure. yeah, yeah. Right on. It's Clark and Perry on the case. Da -na -na -na. Clark and Perry do what it takes. Da -na -na -na. Clark and Perry investigate. The activities and interests of local artists in the Windy City's finest throughout both Lethbridge and Medicine Hat, Alberta. Available on Telus, Optic TV, On Demand, Vidflex, YouTube, and more for limited time only. Terms and conditions apply. Da -na -na -na.